Summer Shines, and we're about to embark on a one-year adventure on the Great American Loop on a boat. Whoa. But first... We gotta get a boat. <laughs> Woo! So, this, this, this is, this is video one of trying to find... Of the boat search. Of the boat search. Mm -hmm. So, the boat. <clears throat> Let's talk about the Great Loop. So, if you didn't see our previous video, it is a, the Great Loop is a 6,000 mile, roughly, mm -hmm. um, loop, journey around the eastern seaboard of the United States, up into Canada, down the river systems, makes a great a little circle. A loop. Mm -hmm. And you do it by boat on the intercoastal waterways, rivers, and lakes. The trickiest part right now for us is finding the boat. Mm -hmm. Now, in order to do the lo loop, there are certain constraints on the boat, okay? Mark has a lovely diagram here. So, there is a fixed bridge in Chicago that is nine feet, six inches above the water. Your boat 19 cannot, feet. Oh, 19 feet. 19 feet, six inches above the water. You cannot have a boat that is taller than 19 feet, six inches. Or you inches. can't do the or loop. Or you can't complete the loop. You can loop. go other places. You can't do the yeah. loop. Sailboats do the loop, and they take their mast down. Um, some boats, have this, this stuff folds down, but you just have to be able to get under that one fixed bridge. And people have done this loop in everything from a jet ski to a 70-foot yacht. I think a pontoon boat would do. We're trying to find That's a boat nice. that is under 19 feet 6 inches tall. We also don't want it to draw any more than 5 feet. So there's there are, it's just easier. You, That's you, how much boat is under the water. Oh yeah, so yeah, the stuff under the water. That's a nautical term that you use. Nautical term. I'm so salty already. They, yeah, you don't want it to draw anymore. Can't than be deeper than five, five feet. feet. Preferably four feet, four feet six. Because uh -huh. then you can get into nooks and crannies up in Canada. You can do it in a in a five foot something inch boat, but you have to sign some waivers apparently in Canada, and it's just trickier. So ideally, you want it to not go down below the waterline or draw any more than five feet. And then people have done it in really long yachts. We're thinking under sixty feet. Which is still not a small boat. It's not a small boat. I mean, we're, we're kind of in the 50-foot range. The other important thing to know when you're <clears> looking <throat> to buy a boat, which we've discovered, is you have to know what you can get insured for. So mm -hmm. depending on your... Don't go buy a boat and then say, ooh, I need to get insurance. <laughs> depending on your experience level will will impact how big a boat you can purchase. Mm -hmm. So figure that out first. And insure. And insure, yes. Luckily, we have... So, we have some experience. A ship's log. Shocking. With experience. We went to the Chapman School of Seamanship. We have had access to boats that we did not own, that we have captained. Um, so, we have a fair amount of experience. We always them. carry our boater's pocket reference. <laughs> anyway, so, those are the constraints to do the loop by with any boat. And then there's some fuel constraints too, but those are minute details. And then you stage. get into how comfortable do you want well, to what do we What do we need? Yeah. So we, what need, is, what do you need? we need three <laughs> staterooms. So one for us, one for our kids to share, and one for a tutor who's going to help educate our children while we're on this boat for a year. And I need a washer and dryer. I do not want to be doing laundry in the marinas. You need a good place to paint. Mm -hmm. And what I'm are our other artist. restraints? Fine artist, so I have to paint on the back. That'll be yeah. my studio. Um, People on. say you're gonna paint while you're moving. No. No, you're gonna. We're gonna be painting when we're um, anchored. Anchored. We also want a boat that's gonna resell easily. So we're, in essence, we, you, you're buying the boat, but then we're going to sell as, as soon as Yeah, that's done. key. Most people say, well, can't you just rent a boat? And no, because of insurance constraints, you cannot just rent a boat because you're going through different states and actually different countries. Mm -hmm. So you can't just rent a boat. Our goal is to buy a boat, use the boat for the time period, the year to potentially a year and a half or a little more, Maybe and then two. sell the boat. We want, obviously, something that we buy is going to have to be able, we need to be able to resell it quickly. Now, I get seasick, so stabilizers are another thing high What's on a my stabilizer? List. Oh, it keeps the boat from... Oh, okay. Now, my favorite stabilizer is the Sea Keeper, which is the coolest thing ever. I don't think that will be on any of the boats we're looking at, but one day... One day. One day. That'll be our kids are in college and living yes. on the boat full time. Oh, that's the coolest thing. I love that. Okay, so that's our, those are our main requirements. So there's all sorts of different boats you can you can use to do the loop. Everything from a jet ski to a gigantic yacht and everything in between. We've narrowed it down to a motor yacht with a flybridge. Yes, as opposed to a motor yacht without a flybridge. Or a trawler. Or yes. a 
speed boat. What do you call like cigarette boat style? Cigarette boat. Yeah, with a with go a, fast with boat. A, a go fast boat, or sport fisher. Like yeah, we're yeah. going with a flybridge motor yacht, and we needed to have at least three staterooms, like we said. So that really limits our search, too. If you um, go over fifty feet, you start getting into three staterooms. Under forty feet, it's mostly like they're basically it's a, a couple, couple doing it and a couple planning on having guests every once in a while. So we are bigger than, and that's most loopers. That's retired couples who want friends or grandchildren one at a time to come and visit. This is a house that we're gonna be, this is gonna be our house. So we've gotta have three bedrooms, preferably three bathrooms. When you factor in the height restraints, the draw restraints, and we don't want it to be too long, it doesn't give us a ton of options. No. Nope. And so we're looking at a variety of boats, everything from a, um, an older, late 70s, early 80s boat that mechanically is great, has updated electronics, but is just needing a makeover, which we love to do. Mm -hmm. So something like an older Hatteras, mm -hmm. which would be great to go in there, gut the interiors, make it fabulous, um, is one option, but that takes time. Um, all the way to the other extreme would be a newer boat like the Meridian or a cruiser mm -hmm. that doesn't need Carver. Carver. Um, those are very queen popular. Ship. Oh, we've also there's a queen ship, but I think it's too big. It's too deep. It's too deep. It's yeah. so beautiful. So beautiful. Oh, I love that boat. Um, we might have to forego we, some areas just for that boat. We've, we're also looking at uh, what year is the burger? Uh, burgers in 1960s and it's oh, yeah it's gorgeous it is gorgeous but it, it gets back fabulous. to the insurance thing like you know our well, insurance also, guy said mm -mm. no not that age well and that one has a whole has whole crew quarters so if we get the bigger the boat the more likely we are to want and need a captain in addition to a tutor which sounds crazy but it might actually be super fun I'm going to vote on it being super fun because we won't have to captain the whole time. We can still work. Well, and our thought is retired captain yes. and wife who's maybe a school teacher. This is a perfect scenario. Oh, so she we're, was we're a just, school teacher. Just throw it out there. They're and they're going to live full time. So it would be like having older aunt and uncle or grandma and granddad surrogate on the boat. And they're watching the kids and helping us with random helping, boat things. They're helping educate the children, an extra set of adult hands. And if we have to head home for some reason, they can stay with the boat. So, who I knows? Think, Crazier I, things have I happened. I think that couple exists. We just have to find them. Yeah. When, when? I mean, it'd be awesome, right? Yeah. Who wouldn't want to come with us for a year on a very small vessel? <laughs> yeah, we uh, the range we're looking at is pretty hilarious. So, we're looking at smaller boats that need renos, and it would just be us to larger boats that don't need full renos, and we would have a captain and, and a tutor. Um, I mean, it's we're, we're looking at the gamut. Mm -hmm. And we have an agent to do it. We aren't oh, physically yeah. going and looking. So they're just like buying a house. There are boat agents. We are using Curtis Stokes and Associates. And specialize in loop boats. So they know all the ins and outs of the crazy lifestyle of moving onto a boat. And what they do for you is as you're looking at all the boat websites, like boat listings, house listings, you're like, we love that one, that one, that one. One's in Tennessee, one's in Florida, one's in Virginia. You can't physically go, especially during a pandemic, which we're in right now. So their agents either are in the area or they short drive or fly to go look at the boat for you. And they say, you shouldn't even look at this one. Yeah, or they're really? like, this is this was a pretty good one. So you could whittle down 20 boats to maybe five. When you get pictures of a boat, they look amazing. And then you get your agent on the boat or you may go on the boat and it looks like a completely different boat. So realize that that agent or owner is putting their best foot forward on those pictures. And if there's not, if the pictures aren't good, then yeah, some some pictures are. Boats look different when you go on them in person. And then once you find your boat that you really like, then it gets serious, and you do what's called a survey, which is like a home oh, yeah, it's inspection. Like a home inspection for a boat, except for they take the boat out on the water and they run everything. Well, they first the the, the survey, survey yes is actually done at the dock. Then there's a sea char. 
the sea um, trials when you take the boat but out. But first, we got to find a boat that we like. Yeah. Because um, you don't want to do six surveys because they do cost we money. We pay for the surveys, and say surveys aren't cheap. But you obviously want to figure out if there's water leaks or rust or you know how the engines are running, if there's metal in the oil, like all these tests they do. Wow. Ah! <laughs> and small detail, we're going into the winter, so we're in the south. Boats up in the north are already being basically dry winterized <laughs> and dry storage. So we, can't. so we could do an inspection, but you can't do a sea trial. So that throws a loop in it. So then you have to wait till the spring. A kink. A kink. In, in our loop. Yes. Uh, you could still do it and you sign all the paperwork and then you say, okay, we love it. If we put it in the water and it blows up, we're not getting it. So there are ways to work around it. But that does throw a little kink in the plan of finding the boat in the winter trying to leave in the spring. Tips for anybody who's watching this who um, is thinking about doing the loop. I would recommend that you make a list of what are your requirements. I have it on my computer. I use Evernote. I love it. Um, I have must-haves and wants. And then I'm obviously... And that could be like galley up, galley down in a hole, how many bedrooms, oh, how many I want, heads. I want our kids' stateroom, bedroom. Um, next to ours. Some of the layouts of boats have the master stateroom and the stern of the boat and the, and the kids, kids at the front. And, the, and the nanny or no tutors good. in the front with the engines in between. That won't work for this mama. If there's I'm, a boat fire or it starts sinking, we want to be able to get kids. Right there. Grab so, and run. So make a list of your requirements. Uh, find a good boat broker. Find an insurance agent so you know what you are able to insure and what you're able to purchase. You can send them a link. Hey, does this one work? And, you know, I'm getting back, ah, that one's a little too big. Or, yeah, that would work if the survey works. So, you know, as you're looking at the boat, be in contact with your insurance mm -hmm. guy. And, you know, yeah. you'll want to take good notes because there's so many boats at so many places. It's not as easy as, to say, buying they a car. They start running they're together. All, they're all different. And they've all been customized. And, uh, you know, obviously we're only looking at used boats. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't even know what. <laughs> so we're like, yeah. If you're looking at a brand new boat, that's probably a whole different ball game. But um, I would do that, and then you, you you move on to our next step, which is to start getting on the boats. And we're going to start doing that shortly. We've narrowed down our list. Mm -hmm. We've got a few contenders. We're trying to stay regional, so farthest way is Florida. We have a couple really close. An hour and a half drive would be amazing in Chattanooga, Tennessee. So we could go up and visit the boat and work on the boat, maybe take it out, you know, practice. Mm -hmm. Ones in Florida are a half day drive, 10 hour drive at the most. So that's still doable. What we're trying to avoid is New York, Virginia, Michigan. There was Michigan. a really great. There's one in Sheboygan, Michigan, which is about completely halfway on the loop, which would still be doable. You just do the loop in reverse. So anyway, figure out what you want and need and then narrow it down from there. And they always say you want the smallest boat that you can be comfortable on for the loop. They always say that. They do. <laughs> I'm not sure I'm gonna be real comfortable on a little boat. Okay, so yeah. So we've narrowed down our boat search to eliminate trawlers, to eliminate any boat with two staterooms. I'm we also that. don't want uh, like a, what's it, like a Sea Ray, like a long, low boat oh, that a lot of people point. like which is which is a great that's a great boat for going like florida to the bahamas really fast or we could get under bridges that way some people have done it in that which is great but we feel that a fly bridge which is where you drive up top and sit and look gives you a great vantage point and it's an extra space to get away yeah so that's why but we're gonna be seeing dolphins and the higher up see them and when we're in the bahamas because that's part of the plan too to see Oh yeah. All oh, that water and a flybridge is just a great place to be. So Somewhere out there is our boat I right know. now waiting on us. Okay. When we start actually going on to boats, we will post that process and, and finding our dream boat part two. And in the meantime, please like and subscribe. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Yeah. Join us on this journey. It'll be fun. <laughs>